Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming April-Spring of 2017 auction. And what we have here today are a pair of prototype pistols. Um, one of these is very much Bill 8 tool room sort of prototype. One is more fleshed out, probably fireable. Um, but these were both manufactured, or both patented and designed, by a guy named Joseph Chester White from Chelsea, Massachusetts. He was half of the White Merrill uh, team that put together a pistol for the US 1907 pistol trials, where it kind of failed pretty badly. Uh, they submitted a second follow-up design in 1911, or they were talking about submitting a follow-up design. They built one. It also didn't go anywhere. What's interesting about these two pistols is that they are both guns that actually sort of predate uh, that 1907 Trials pistol. The patent for... well there's one patent that White filed in 1905 that was approved in 1908 that I believe it definitely covers this pistol, but I think there are also some elements of it in this one. These are not 45s, these are both in 38 caliber, and They've got some interesting and unique features to them, so let's just jump straight to looking closer at these two guns. So these are both quite large pistols. This one especially has a lot of material in it. It's about a three pound gun. Um, and this one cycles but doesn't fire. This one has some mechanical issues to it, but we can still take a look at some of the elements there. So the patent most closely resembles this pistol. Certainly the elements you see on the outside are very much like the patent drawing, but there's some elements to the magazine of this one that come into play as well. So let's start with this guy. According to White's patent, the idea here, aside from developing a pistol that was better than anything else at the time, uh, he specifically wrote that he wanted... his aim was to develop a pistol where you could easily change the caliber, although I don't see a whole lot in the patent about how that would have actually been done. Now he also has a couple of distinct features here. Uh, there is a cocking lever on the side of the frame. This is directly connected to the hammer, and it has these helpful notes. Uh, you can put the gun at half cock there. In theory, you could cock the pistol all the way there. But this pistol has some mechanical issues, and it will not engage to a fully cocked position. So uh, that's, what the that's what the indicator and the hammer are intended to do. Now this is a short recoil pistol, so the whole assembly slides backwards. Not very much, probably not more than about two millimeters. Uh, but once it does, it unlocks the slide, which can then open up. Now, the further mechanical issue this pistol has right now is that it'll only open up about halfway. Um, however, that is enough for us to see the locking mechanism down here. You can see these two sets of grooves, or lugs. Those uh, are very much like the locking mechanism on a C96 broom handle. So there is a piece in here that pivots up and engages into those locking recesses. When the slide recoils back, like this, that locking wedge drops out of engagement and allows the, the bolt itself to move backwards. The rear sight on here is you know, kind of interesting and cool. Uh, it is adjustable for windage by rotating, or pivoting, on this screw side to side. So you'd rotate it around, and you've got a, a bar in the front here with a centering notch. There it, there's the front sight. Line that up in the rear sight. A lot of weird stuff going on on the back end of this pistol. One other element I can show you here is the magazine. Mag release is a button right here on the side, not directly connected to the magazine, just locks it by this catch. We have an eight round magazine. It still has these characteristic screws. Um, all of the white Merrill pistols pretty much are, are, have magazines that are held in, held together by screws, which is interesting. And then, in a very classy move, he has actually numbered the witness holes in the magazine. You don't see something like that these days. So, eight round capacity. And what appears to be some sort of bronze, or at least bronze colored, follower. Interesting. Now the second pistol is a lot less refined. Um, it is more functional in that I can actually cycle the slide all the way. Uh, but I'm not sure that this pistol is in a firing condition. 
So on this one, when you fire, the barrel and the, the whole barrel assembly moves backwards. You can see it retreats into the slide there just a little bit. And the barrel itself is actually rotating. It's a little hard to pick up there because it is a nice smooth shiny finish. But it does rotate not much, maybe 20 degrees, something like that. Once the barrel starts to move back, there is a connecting bar in here, which I expect connects the, the bolt itself to the recoil spring, which is going to be in this tube underneath. When I open the bolt up, you can see that connecting bar there on the far side of the inside. And then we do have a striker that extends out the back, so you have a, an indicator when the gun is cocked and ready to fire. The magazine is a work in progress on this gun. Uh, it just has a spring tab back here to hold the magazine in. But this is interesting because of its very much conical shape. And there are two possibilities here. One possibility is that this was designed for a very strange, very conical cartridge, which I don't think is the case. What I believe this was designed for was so that you could have a rimmed cartridge, and you could stack one round here and one round this way back and forth, which allows them to stack in much more of a straight line than if you had one rim sitting directly on top of another, in which case you'd end up with a, you'd need a very curved magazine. Uh, this is something you do see occasionally in 22 caliber magazines, uh, where the, the rounds are slightly offset from each other in order to, to stack better, but it's cool to see that on a larger, uh, larger magazine like this one. It's always interesting to look at the prototype pistols that are still works in progress and ideas that never got fully finished, because you see a lot of creative ideas in them that may be so creative that they don't actually lend themselves to truly functional guns, but it's the sort of stuff you don't see in nice polished finished pistols. So if you enjoyed taking a look at these, maybe you'd also enjoy owning them yourself. They are both coming up for sale here at James Julia. Uh, being sold separately, not a batch, but they have a lot in common, so I stuck them together for the video. Uh, take a look at the description text below. You'll find links to both of the catalog pages for these two. You can take a look at the pictures and description and provenance from the Julia catalog, and place bids on one or both right there through the website if you're so inclined. Thanks for watching.